two. Welcome back to WNST, Towson Baltimore and WNST.net. We're at State Fair. We are in Catonsville. Beautiful. The Ville. Man, are they putting the lawn chairs up out in front of State Fair and in front uh, of Jennings yet? Oh, no? It's a religious holiday in Catonsville, <laughs> July the 4th. You'll see Jennings involved. You'll see State Fair involved. Uh, it, it is a high holiday. Obviously, such a high holiday. We've uh, we've brought Mick, Mick and John, and John Lennon in, you yeah, know, so yeah, it doesn't get any more. We've rearranged holiday. the furniture here. Thank you, so. Evan Brown. We love you. We love your Benedicts. Um, uh, Fraser Smith's here. So I want to get to Governor Schaefer and to the heart. Quick of shout out before you do no, that. Go ahead. Next go. week, right? We're going to oh. be with Mayor Jack. Young. Mayor Jack Young at Fadley's. Uh, One of Crab our other Cakes. great sponsors. Come on down. It's Thursday morning. We're going to be doing that, and uh, we're excited about that as well. Uh, obviously, we're excited about that. Look, Be before you get to Governor Schaefer, mm -hmm. I'm going right. to jump in. That's, we don't mind stepping on each other. Yeah, please do. Because I, I want to go Schaefer nonstop to the end in leadership and the folks you've covered. I was fascinated when I was looking up some of your past activities, Frazier, that in a past life, you wanted to understand public housing better. Still an issue today. Here we are, 2019, the need for affordable public housing. And you went and spent a year living in public housing. Yes. Correct? When yes. was this? Give yeah. me the story. And so I have to say to you, who does that? Right. <laughs> well, that's my question. That's why <laughs> you knew I had to ask that. I, I want to know about the experience. I probably wouldn't have done it, but I, I was teaching a, a course in uh, news writing at uh, Roger Williams College, which was uh, over on the Bay and not, not too far away from uh, from Providence, where I then worked. And I, from teachers and students there, I heard that they were going to have a, open an urban laboratory in one of the one of the housing projects that was in a lot of trouble the the biggest building there had been shut down for uh, various reasons uh, elderly people were living there mostly they were being victimized by the kids that lived there it, it the place was out of control it, 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 so they they closed it and then they they reopened it for the for the students and i i thought well i mean I can't remember if somebody invited me or, or if I just thought, why don't I go and do this? Uh, it was a little bit crazy, I have to admit. Uh, uh, my wife and my then three-year-old daughter uh, moved in there. So you took we, your family into public housing for a year. I did, I did. and uh, they as, a, as a church, just a, for a journalism, just, just to... You could have afforded. What to other live reason up? would there have been? Right. Okay. I, yeah, sure. I thought, look, uh, housing, public housing in the country was in a lot of trouble. It had started out w with all the good intentions. It was uh, pretty much after the Korean War in the fifties, and it was thought to be transitional. People would stay there while they got their their legs under them and move on. Was this sort of the aftermath of the New Deal? Like, what was the the, the, the next part of the leftovers that didn't get helped by that? Is that you kind could of look what at it that way? But I think it mostly was was driven by uh, why there were such housing shortages then. I don't know, but I think it was mostly after the after the Korean War, uh, the, a lot of. Uh, returning soldiers, a lot of poor people in the country, which we had not addressed very much as a society. Uh, and, and there was a, there was a need for it. In fact, there was a, there was a waiting list in private in Providence. And so they really did not want to close this building because it probably housed uh, two or 300 people or, or families. Uh, but it was it was not unique. It was happening around the country, and I thought, you know, it's a national story, it's a local story, and so I'll write about it. I'll, I'll find out what you know. One of the things that that I thought about, I remember, and it's in the book actually, is you were if you grew up in the projects, you were you had a stigma from the very beginning. It didn't matter who you were. You you grew up in the projects. I mean, what happened was that uh, transitional housing was, again, was the idea. But a, a lot of people just settled in there uh, for various reasons. They didn't have skills to, uh, to make more money. So that, but, but almost, and there, there's a, there's a, in my series, there's an interview with a family that I met soon after I got there, which was maybe 10 years after, the, after all this began, and they were going through the real estate ads, and I and I said, "Are you are you looking to move?" And they said, "Yeah, we really are." And how long have you been here, or how long have you been looking since we got here? Mm. And you know, financially, it just didn't work for them. 
so so they were entrapped in many ways because there was a lot of bad behavior there. The cops were were tired of responding to calls to to come there. Probably wouldn't respond at times. And there may have been cases when they didn't respond. Correct. Yeah, sure. So there were lots of things. And I, I, I had started covering the uh, Johnson's War on Poverty. So I was really kind of immersed in it anyway. Uh, and so, part of what, uh, part of what uh, made it l less... Uh, Part of what made it less good for me and and professionally was that I didn't stop covering my beat. I was, you know, there was always a lot of stuff going on with Progress for Providence, which it was then called. So I wasn't living there uh, 24 hours a day. I was there. I was right. sleeping there. And, and But I didn't meet a lot of the kids. They, some of those kids had invented their own language. Uh, wow. It wasn't really complicated one but it was their language and you know they would lapse into it if if somebody was threatening them in some way um so you know it was a uh it was a valuable thing i wrote a, a three-part series about it uh i think it was nominated for a pulitzer yeah it, w it was um uh, it, it actually did pretty well that's never gonna happen for me i mean <laughs> I mean, that's you know, a pretty modest guy. Just for those of you listening or watching, the piece that Frazier's talking about was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. What was your big – I know Nestor we're, – we're pressed for time. Nestor's hero is William Donald Schaefer. we got to get to that. You're the, you're the William Donald Schaefer biography. What was your takeaway about public housing and our commitment to that? What did you learn in that year? You, you have to be careful about good intentions. You you have to when you're when you're making policy you need to uh, you, I think you need to know what the uh, what 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 the worst outcome is and be prepared for it. Uh, Knowing how someone will exploit it in, in in some way. Well, people weren't exploiting it in my ex my experience. They were they were pretty much trapped by it. Right. You 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 got into it and you couldn't get out of it. The transitional part of it didn't work. What was gonna what would happen then? The, the buildings were very unattractive. They were sort of, I think of them as blunt, uh, sharp objects all around. Well, we had those concrete. in Baltimore for years. Sure, sure. And I, I, I think uh, ultimately uh, Sh Mayor Schmoke right. got rid of a lot of them. Correct. And people should have gotten rid of them. You know, you, you spend a lot of money. You have an elaborate system of operating them. Uh, they're, they're always serving a little bit of their intended use. And yet, they they fall deeper and deeper into uh, trouble. Well, and it's so interesting, Nestor, as we jump to Schaefer and lessons of leadership. I think every guest, because Frazier said the people are trapped, they become trapped, be beware of good intentions, comes back again to economic viability and jobs. And I don't think we've had a guest on yet on Baltimore Positive when we're looking to try to get the city moving forward again that hasn't talked about jobs. Like jobs has been front and center in every conversation well yeah and, and you know governor schaefer as mayor schaefer uh, has this uh, sheen about him because of the harbor and harbor place and we've talked about you know the flight of population at that time and where we are part of this is saying where have we been and where are we going and i know we talked with don fry about that and where the inner harbor is uh, i i live at the inner harbor i live right across the street from the schaefer statue on cold days some days i go over and put a little raven hat on him and put a you know put a little scarf around him or take him a cocktail when the uh, you know when the uh, the ravens win the super bowl or whatnot uh, you know, I don't idolize that him. That was he his genius. That was his genius. Oh. I mean, he he could relate to you. I mean, he, you know, we all know the, this is the folklore, right? He drove up and down the alleys on weekends. He didn't have anything else to do. And if the trash wasn't being collected and if people weren't taking care of their property, he got on them. And if they were, he would send them, uh, he would make them members of the Order of the Rose. I mean, this is one of the aspects. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they had rose bushes, if, if he, or or something else that he that caught his eye. He would write people uh, letters, and, and uh, I think there was a certificate. 
you know, I said to you're, somebody, you're, you're speaking the, Nestor's the, the, language. You know what, these, these things have to exist <laughs> and been handed down around here. You know that that the mayor once wrote me a beautiful letter about my rose bush. Someone's granddaughter has that letter, right? I sure, mean. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I mean, I, you know, I was talking to somebody about him one day, and I said, "Were you a member of the Order of the Rose?" <laughs> and he said, "He said no, I wasn't, but I wanted to be." <laughs> I mean, so that's it. You know, that gets into the air supply about somebody who is on your level. I mean, they understand you and they're, they know you want things to be good and to work properly. And, you know, I mean, what are the elements of leadership? I, I, I want to think about right. this more, Don. I'm so glad you're, you're dealing with it. But with Schaefer, I, I was always so impressed with the fact that he never doubted his instincts. Wow. He knew what he thought, and nobody was going to push him away from that. Wow. And he also knew that he did not have to be the smartest person in the room. He recruited people because he thought they knew something he didn't know. One of the That's lucky, awesome. Keep going. One of the lucky things that happened to him was <laughs> I need coffee. I'm going to be was, late. It was... <laughs> It was so easy for him to get elected, and there was no question that he would get elected, right? Ninety percent of the people in Baltimore are more than that. Are well, he Democrats. was almost a king in that way, right? He, you couldn't beat he him. He knew right? he knew more about being mayor than than most people who are mayor knew when they get when they're done with it. Why was that? Because he'd been on the council for fifteen years, and then he'd been the council president, and. And, you know, remember the ads that, that showed the cameras closing in on City Hall and then coming to a focus on him yes. sitting at his desk? Wonderful piece of political advertising. There was nothing phony or fake about it. There, there's a story in, in, my, in my Schaefer book about uh, young Tommy talking about coming back from the Army-Navy game or something and driving by City now, Hall. Now, folks, young Tommy who may not know, Tommy D'Alessandro. Exactly, exactly. And there, there was Sha he said, there's Schaefer's little car out there with all his bumper stickers all over his car, and he's upstairs doing whatever he's doing. I mean, you know, it was true that he was married to the city. Right. He wasn't married to anybody else. You know, he was married to the city. So he, he was, and I, I started to say that when it was clear that he was going to be elected, Sally Michael. One one of the one of the people that he knew enough to recruit. I mean, her husband was Michael. Uh, what's that company? It's air conditioning or something like that. He, okay. Oh, AJ very, Michaels, I guess. Very right wealthy there. family, but she was one of the 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 city uh, do gooders, uh, the people who love the city that that he embraced. He inherited them. He all been he put them all to work. Now was he so he took all the people that loved the city, and put them to work. Is that 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 was at the heart? Is that really? Oh what he yeah, did? yeah. And there were many of them that that were. I mean, people were coming down to volunteer. I mean, people people had begun to know him, and they they knew that he was irascible and demanding, and and that <laughs> and that if and and you know one of the things that he did was he embraced women. At a time when women were not given any responsibility in wow. almost anything. And, of course, somebody else w had to counter that by saying, well, he recognized a cheap labor force. <laughs> <laughs> but, in fact, I think that was true. <laughs> and, I mean, what do you do in, in life? You know, you find the access point. And, that, and with him, that was, that's what he did. Um, and, you know, so, and, and also people were very determined to do their best work for him because they knew they were going to see it somewhere. And sometimes it led to bad outcomes. Remember pink sidewalks and, you know, uh, buying a manhole or, or, or uh, uh, not a manhole. Uh, manhole cover? No, 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 no. The problems in the street, you know, uh, potholes. A oh, pothole. Oh, you, so pothole. you could you invest, no pothole. Pothole. Right. You could invest pothole, right. You could invest in a pothole right. Right, and right. dedicate it to somebody. I mean, you know, but he so wasn't afraid of ideas, and he wasn't afraid to fail. Never, never. I mean, he didn't want to fail. Right. So, so you can't I mean, like he said, you know, one though, of the right? things he said was the aquarium has to be first class, first day. And this, you know, and then there's that whole thing about swimming in the pool. Right. And, you know, and being willing. And, you know, I remember Roger Simon, one of the columnists uh -huh. that came sure. here from Chicago. Right. 
in Chicago and probably among the political insiders, there's a good example of this, but never get photographed in a, in a hat. It was a rule I had for everyone I worked for and tried to carry it over into my administration. Don't put a hat on. Don't put a hat on. Right. Schaefer put everybody's Don't hat on. Don't get on a tank if you're Michael Dukakis. Exactly. Right. Well, that's the example I was thinking about. Right. With a tank helmet. Right, right, right. right. But Schaefer, you know, Schaefer drew, dressed up as H.L. Mencken. Right. You know, he, he he loved the military. He liked standing standing up in Jeeps, you know. Amazing. <laughs> well, why I mean, he knew phrase? what related to people. He knew how to re- – look, look at what happened when, when he died. And, he, and they, you know, they, they did a th- – he was always wanting some kind of a pageant. And there was one at the end, right, when he, oh, there when was. he, when he drove in the, and the hearse drove him through the, <clears throat> through the city and – People black and white were Amazing. on street corners when he's coming by. So, you know, so he, you had no doubt about what he wanted. You knew that what he wanted was what you wanted. Um, he believed in, he knew, you know, he was very instinctive. He, he, was not, uh, he wasn't always the most book smart person in the world. I asked him what he thought about the Cone Sisters, the great the art collector, <laughs> and he acted like he'd never heard of them. <laughs> and, and this was political as well. I mean, I think he knew that it was, if you were, if you were a politician, don't pretend you know French. Right, right, right. Don't do not do something like that, right? Because you're going to lose a, a, a large numbers people. of people right away. So he pretended he didn't know who the cones were. Or maybe he didn't. I, I, I just really don't know. Why didn't it transfer? Here's, it, it, we're going to have to have Frazier back on because we've got to talk about all the folks he's covered. I know we're, we're coming up on the clock. I know everybody's got tight schedules. Why didn't it transfer to being governor? I he, think it did. Was, you think it did? I think it did. But his passion wasn't for the state, from my understanding. My understanding is he never really oh. wanted that gig. He just well, sort that, of ascended to it to some degree. Well, what's right? your take? Are we wrong? Tell us why you think it did transfer. Well, he had, he had some things to overcome. Uh, the, the Baltimore Council, I, this is something I heard when I first got here. The City Council of Baltimore is the, the best example, the best argument for the divine right of kings. <laughs> because they didn't do anything. I mean, the the the, the uh, structure was such that nothing they did was important. Because he always had ten votes, and that's all he needed in those days. Uh, Senator Mikulski made that quite clear, didn't oh, she? Oh yeah, she said she was Schaefer eyes. Schaefer eyes. Oh, yeah, she absolutely. thought she was going to win one day, and she walked in, and she talks about a story where none of the other council members. No, but the story make was the highway down. coming through Canton, exactly. Right? Yeah, and right. and she said initially Luke. she got her ass kicked. And she said, no, you still see there's a tunnel there. Right. So at well, some she, point, that even losing to, to well, McCall's they, 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 they figured it she out. She ended up winning. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you right. know, they, right. killed, they killed the road to nowhere. Right. And, you know, and, and at, he didn't often do this. He didn't often have to do it, but he admitted that, that you know, they buried. I think they symbolically buried the hatchet. No, they did. Under I the think, water. Yeah, I, I, I think they did. <laughs> In well, a you, tube. Know, you know, it's interesting, Nestor, you'll like, and I'm sure you knew this, Fraser. I worked with, I was fortunate enough to work with a number of folks who had been in a, in a Schaefer cabinet. Every one of them tells the same story. If the meeting started at 10.30, Frazier's nodding his head for those of you listening and not watching. If the meeting started at 10.30 and somehow you got delayed and you showed up at 10.30 and 30 seconds, the door was shut and locked. You weren't allowed to enter the meeting. So if you had a meeting with Mary Schaefer at 10.30, am I, is that That's accurate? the demanding oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. part, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's the... the These were cabinet secretaries. I mean, you know, he wasn't. He wasn't always the most pleasant person in the world to know. I mean, you know, he would accuse Schmoke of, of going to sleep in the cabinet meetings, which was not true. And, and you know, I mean, he did stuff like that. He knew that. She, he knew. I mean, you know, back to back to what he knew politically. He knew a lot politically, but he did not want to run against uh, Schmoke. He he was afraid that that. Would, first of all, I think he knew he would lose, or thought he would lose. I mean, as it turns out, Schmoke barely beat Du Burns, right. as you remember. Cla- Clarence Du Burns. But, you know, he, di- he, wasn't, he didn't want to do that. And also, it, it ended up, as powerful as he was, it ended up not being his choice. I mean, Irv Covens, who was angry at Sachs, Steve Sachs, right. then the attorney general, who ran against Schaefer in 86, 
said n- nobody can nobody can beat Sachs but Schaefer. So you're running for governor. So you know, politically things were working in that direction, and he owed everything or almost everything to COVID. One of the old line Baltimore political bosses, right? Yeah, absolutely. For folks who, yeah. And when we had political bosses, listen, I know we're up against the clock. What you get a call. Whoever the next mayor is, Nestor, whoever it is, many other names, Jack Young, you name it, Brandon, whoever's going to be the next mayor, you get a call and they say to you, Frazier, what are the first two or three things I've got to do to be successful? Tell me, give me, they call a bunch of people, you're one of them. Say, Frazier, you've covered her for a long time. What do I need to do to be successful? And, and is it different now than it might have been 40 years ago? Is the job different now? Well, the job is definitely different, and who would want the job? That's the question everybody asks, but somebody will want it. And I, th- I think that whoever succeeds uh, young, and, and even if it is young, I think pe- pe- people need to do some of the things I just said Schaefer and his, and his people did. Find the, find the smartest people. Nestor um, said, the first you, you and Nestor must have been talking. It's the first rule of life. One of the things that have been said about uh, former Mayor Pugh is that she did not and could not she didn't learn to delegate, and she couldn't delegate. So you cannot run a city like Baltimore or Cleveland or Chicago or any city without people that know a lot about what's going on in the city and, and how to make things work. And things are not going to work if you, if you don't have uh, – I mean, Shaver not only did that, but he deputized people like Hank Buda, who was the, uh, who was the, the boss of the phone company, right? And and uh, and lots of other people who were Commun- business leaders. They right? were business leaders. He made them a shadow cabinet, and he would go to them and say, and sometimes he would even announce it before he told them that he wanted them to raise money for something. Or there is that the shadow government that you wrote about? Well, uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, that was Charlie Benton. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Benton was his numbers guy, and you know, he was always watching what Benton was doing. He, he, so he knew what was going on in the shadow government, for sure. I mean, there was no money, and then suddenly there's $100 million <laughs> in the bank of the city. The city is a bank? Excuse me? How did that happen? Another award-winning piece by <laughs> Frazier Smith. We're out of time. We, so we're definitely having Frazier back on. The Daily Miracle. I don't want to go. Do I have I to go you, to football practice? I think you got to go out. You've got practice. another job to do today. Uh, Frazier, thank you. How's the golf game? I haven't played very much recently, but I'm um, I'm getting back. Okay, I want to I want to get back. Get back. Well, you and it. I will play, right? There you go. We're on. What a great day, Nestor State Fair. We've got our other. I haven't sponsors. even eaten yet. You haven't eaten. We've got Jennings up the street. We've got Fadley's. We've got Mayor Jack Young next week. Kind of Baltimore positive was this where I didn't even eat. We got Mick. You know why I didn't eat? I was too busy talking. Right? Literally. What, what, you a, can't gra- do both. what a great morning. Thank Thanks you. for you. And I'm sorry I haven't known you for 35 years the way I should have, but y- oh. you were intimidating to me. You were. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 you should have come and said hello to me. I should have come and said hello to you. You I'm, wouldn't have liked me. I was, I'm not an intimidating guy. I'm really not. <laughs> All right, Frazier Smith, everybody. I was intimidated by intelligence when I was young. The, <laughs> the Daily Miracle, coming out in September or October. We are WNSD.net, AM 1570. Hope to see you at Fadley's next week with Mayor Jack Young on Thursday, the 20th. We are WNSD.net, signing off from Catonsville.